several processes must be developed in parallel to allow the emergence of a true democracy. First there must be enough indignant, outraged people who see the injustices of the system. We need a general awareness about the nature of our societies, we live in an oligarchy, not in a democracy. The links between our political systems and economic and social problems must be explained the injustices on the many brought upon by the minority ruling class. This first part is sort of an enhanced awareness, which would give rise to the second stage, possibly enabling citizens to resolve the problem. The revolution therefore requires a general mobilization of all indignant, not only against the current system, but mostly for a concrete alternative. Thus the 15M movement in Spain with its slogan Real Democracia, Real Democracy Now drew the bright and inspiring line that all popular protest movements were then going to follow. Real democracy, a system where the people really have the power, is emphasized throughout these movements. However there is not much reflection on the development of a real democracy applicable across nations. All democratic activists must focus both on the practical struggle, but also on the theoretical construction of a concrete solution. Without a sound and global alternative, the movement will remain a kind of citizen lobby opposing injustice but will never become a revolution or a force able to bring out democracy. The distribution of power in a society is organized with a constitution. Currently constitutions were written by politicians and elites who have granted privileges and have allowed the triumph of private interests over the general interests. It is important to write one or several democratic constitutions, impossible to corrupt, that could be proposed as soon as possible as an alternative solution to all citizens. This requires forming interconnected working groups in charge of thinking through and writing constitutions to be submitted to popular assemblies, which will improve with criticism and debate with other productions. The process will ripen when one or several democratic constitutions eventually achieve consensus in the popular movements. The final step, the overthrow of existing institutions and the establishment of the new system, could then be considered. As you can see, the revolutions in which the intended social project had not been clearly defined by a constitution, a predefined organization of powers, were all recuperated, the Soviets and the USSR, the revolutions of the Arab Spring, the French Revolution, and so on.